Hope everyone had a good day and good week last week. We're ready to come back and praise the Lord together. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to do a little things a little different this morning than what we've been doing. We're going to mix it up. We're going to have some of the stuff we've done before and some new stuff. So, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with one that's that we've known for a while. It's called "Blessed Be Your Name." So I want you to stand with me and sing when it's time to sing. Here we go now. And blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, when I'm found in the desert place, for I walk through the wilderness. If you'll remain standing, let's pray together as we start out. Father, thank you for the day and just for your love and for all that you do. Just for an opportunity to be able to be together to worship you. We love you. It's in Christ and we pray. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Got a couple of announcements for you. Last couple of weeks, we've been talking about Operation Christmas Child. And we still have some quarter sheets back there on the bulletin board. If you want to go grab one of these about things that we're starting to gather, but we're not collecting. Or we're collecting, but we're not gathering. Actually, if you pick these things up, keep them at your house until we're ready for them and we will let you know. But uh, this is the June list of things that we're starting to put together for Operation Christmas Child. Uh, yesterday, I don't know if anybody's really had a chance because they're what we did yesterday with the men's work day, or let me say the work day, you're not going to see a lot of it. You will see some of it. But if you get a chance as you're leaving out, look at the front part of the, of the multipurpose center where there used to be a chain link fence. And if you really want to get interested, you can go behind over here and see where a lot of stuff was cleaned. Either that or just go look at the dumpster. 
see what's in the dumpster. Uh, we're praying that they don't look at it and say, we're not dumping it this week. But anyway, we had a great, uh, great showing. Uh, the folks that I wrote down were Charlie, Chester, Ray, Kenny, Oren, Randy, Kevin, Dwayne, Grant. And then we had Trish, Mary, and Ashley come up and help clean the nursery, do some sorting in some rooms to start just cleaning some things around. So I want to say thank you to all of you folks for coming up and helping out and getting this done. We're not done. There's still some more that needs to be done. We need to keep, keep working on some things. So we're going to be planning some additional days to get that taken care of. So uh, we'll let you know about those. Uh, update on Larry. Larry had his surgery on Friday. Larry is home. Larry should be resting at home, but Larry is home. We're just going to leave it at that. So uh, pray for Roz and pray for Kenny and pray for, for Bobby. Pray for the goat. Uh, <laughs> You know, so that, so that they're able to, to help take care of him and, and he doesn't drive him too crazy. So, Larry, we love you. You may be watching, but Larry, we love you. We're still praying for you. We have had some interesting things take place. Uh, you know, you think about graduation and you think about high school graduation and how you can have little individual pockets of things that, have, that happen that make graduation unique. My brother... Uh, my brother didn't get to walk the stage at his graduation because a tornado was about to hit. In fact, they got up and said, tornado coming, graduates pick up your diplomas in the office, we're leaving. <laughs> and in about eight minutes, the tornado came through Moore, Oklahoma. So my brother's like, I didn't walk the stage. So, but that can happen in individual little pockets here and there. But this year, we've had kind of a, kind of a strange thing with the pandemic. It's not affected a few, it's affected almost everybody in one way or another. This isn't how I wanted to graduate, this isn't what I wanted to do, it wasn't where we're supposed to be. Things, you know, folks have graduated in ballparks, they've graduated at, at, at racetracks, they've graduated in all kinds of places. And so this year it's been different. But we have three graduates we're going to recognize that were here this morning. But one of the things I want you to think about is, you know, graduation is a milestone, Graduation is a milestone. You know what milestones were used for years ago, where it actually got its name. It was a marker that actually marked mileage on where you were going to let you know how far you've made it on your trip. And graduation is one of those milestones that you have to look at. You, know, you can't live at graduation time. Have you all ever thought about wanting to go back and live graduation all over again? You thought about it? No. Yeah, see, there we go. But you remember it, right? Mostly. Mostly. That's okay. You're younger than me. We're going to leave there. Um, as you get older, some of it still slips. But you've got these milestones that are in your life, and high school graduation is one of them because you can look back and realize, as the term fits, milestone. It is how far you're making it on your journey. It's not the end of the journey. It is part of the journey as you progress through. And so what I want to do now is we've got three graduates that are here with us. We have two others I'll mention at the end that weren't able to be here. But um, we've got some graduates that I want to recognize. We have a gift for them. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the gift. Um, it's the Morning Mercies, right? We've got a book that is a devotional book that, that we were given a couple of years ago. That it's called Morning Mercies. And it is a wonderful devotion book. For in the mornings. Because you think about it, his mercies are new each day. And so a great way to start your day is to start in with the word of God and hear something from God's word. And this devotional book is lined up for 365 days. I, don't, I can't remember if it has February 29th in there or not. So if it doesn't on leap year, you get a freebie on that one. But this book is really, really, it's, it, it's kind of impacted us in ways that it's like God brings exactly what you need when you need it. And so we have that for you. So as you start out from this point on, you have something you can start with every day of a new mercy of what God is doing and what God wants to do. So our first one up is going to be Brianna Burns. And we've got some pictures and some slides that we're going to throw up here. So Brianna is graduating from Haltom High School, or I should say graduated from Haltom High School. So, Brianna, if you will come down here. Uh, Brianna is, go to the next slide there, Sandy, if you would. 
Uh, what would you tell your younger self? We've asked our graduates, what would you tell your younger self? And it's easier for me to turn around and read it. It says, remember to always be yourself and don't let other people decide who you are because God made you in his vision of who he wanted you to be. So she would, if she could to go back and tell her younger self, that's what she would want to do. So, And as far as her, her plans, if you'll go to the next slide there, she wants to uh, save up for a car, an apartment, and then go to ACU or UNT. She wants to do vet tech or cosmetology. You think about that, and those are some, those are some things that, that, that we really probably need, especially the cosmetology. Some folks are, are still needing a haircut. We're going to leave it there. So um, our next one up is going to be um, Emma Scott. So Emma, if you will come down. She's graduated from Central High School. And we'd ask her if she were to have, uh, tell your younger self, your personal future isn't as bad as you think it will be. <laughs> Read that one again, okay? Read that one again. How many of us would probably go back and tell ourselves that one? <laughs> that one, when I read it, I went, ooh, that's pretty good. I like that. I like that. Plans that she has, I know that she's looking at going to, to Tarleton and then A&M College Station. I didn't hear a whoop. Nobody's out there doing the whoop. Okay. But that's okay. That's okay. She wants to study visualization and psychology. So as she does that, distance yourself. Be careful what you say. Now, I'm not saying she's going to analyze you, but she might. But anyway, our last one is going to be Riley White. And um, Riley is graduating from North, that Northwest, make sure I read that right, Northwest High School, making sure I, I get the, 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 the uh, reading correctly. And if she could say something to her younger self, that would be, enjoy your high school years. They go by fast. And the older you get, the faster they seem to have gone by. So, yes. Y'all can take your mask off so we can see your beautiful faces. There you go. Now you can smile. They're seeing that you're smiling. I know that Riley is looking at, um, go to our next slide there to make sure. Tony and Guy Hair Academy and do cosmetology. I don't know there's much help for me. But, you know, there's real estate up there. More of it's being come exposed so as we go. But these ladies, I want to say we are praying for you. And in fact, here in just a minute, we're going to pray for you. Uh, the two others that were not able to be here is um, Ryan Roberts, Dwayne's son. So he is graduating. And then we have Alan Martinez. And those guys were not able to be here, but we do have things for them. But I, what I want us to do, I want us to pray over our graduates. So if you would just join me where you are, if you want to reach a hand out towards them, if you want to, want to stand in their honor, you can do that. But I want us to pray for our graduates as they step out into a world that they had not quite anticipated to step into in 2020 when they graduated from high school. So let's pray for them. Let's do that together. Father, I want to pray for our graduates right now. As, as God, they are stepping out, as we just said, into a different type of world than what they had even imagined at this point. Father, I pray a blessing on them. I pray that you would continue to give them wisdom. God, you have given them knowledge. I pray that you would give them the wisdom that they need to make the decisions that they need to as they continue on with this journey of life. But Father, I pray that you would also draw them so close to you in their walk with you. Father, that as we look of what you want to do in their lives, Father, you want to do in our lives, I pray that you would just, just help us to continue to pray for these folks Pray for these, I didn't want to call them students, but God, our graduates, as they continue on. I pray a blessing on them. I pray a blessing on the families of the graduates as well. Father, as some are getting, uh, having one child go out, some are going empty nest. But Father, I pray for the families as well. God, we love you, and we just worship you, and we just praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And Trish has got uh, these bags that, that we're going to get passed out to the ladies and as you get your bag if you want to make your way back and Kevin I guess we're about ready to start singing again
All right, I want to give them their time because that's theirs. I don't want to interrupt it. So, uh, so now let's worship together again. Let's, let's uh, sing this song. It's entitled Sing, Sing, Sing. Go now. Sing, 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 and make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing. Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. What's the love of You know, we talk about singing praises and lifting up the name of Jesus. Why do we do that? It isn't for anything for us, right? And you can be seated if you want to. It's fine. Um, if you want to remain standing, we're going to sing two more songs, but, but um, I'm not going to have you stand the whole time. If you want to sit, that's fine. You know, sometimes I get off on a tangent and talk, but I'm trying not to do that. So with that, our song now is Why We Are here to praise the name of Jesus. It's to give him glory. And that's the name of the song. It's entitled Glory. Roaring out your praise 
He's the one who deserves it, not us, right? All right, our last song this morning is entitled, Oh, Praise the Name. And we all know what that name is, right? That name is Jesus. I cast my mind to Calvary. Where Jesus bled and died for me, I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound. Oh! 
got the backpack back one more time. Y'all know the last few weeks we've been talking about the backpack with one of them was carrying around my failures in it. One of them was uh, carrying around my fears. This week we're going to talk about treasures and trophies but I got to tell you a little bit about this backpack. Calculated up, I've had this backpack about 10 years. It's still in decent shape. But, let me tell you why I got this backpack. Not that there's competition amongst ministers, but there's competition amongst ministers. And when you get together, especially in student ministry, and I'm going to move this around a little bit. When you get a bunch of student ministers together... They start looking at each other, and we're not supposed to compare numbers, but we compare numbers. We also compare other things. And here is the thing. I had always been at little bitty churches and stuff, and God had used us at places to to grow these things and do this and do this. And I would always go to these conferences, and there were these guys. Have you ever been to the conferences for work, and you always have that guy that has the walk? And when you look at them, you look at them and go, yeah. Every student minister that was successful had this backpack. Swiss gear. Got the little X thing in the back to help keep it cool. Had the right straps. Had everything for the, for the laptop, the whole nine yards. This is what successful student ministers used. I had a couple of friends that they were, one of them was the, the, the top youth minister in the four states area in Texarkana. He had this backpack. I went and looked for this backpack. This became a trophy and a treasure. 
Because when I carried this around, it was like, I'm carrying this because that way somebody will see, oh, he's got the same backpack that so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so has. Because it became about me, and I'm wanting to let folks know who I am and what I'm doing and the whole nine yards. You see where I'm going with that? It became a trophy, and it became a treasure of me. I can honestly say, right now, this is nothing more than a thing to carry my stuff around in. I got to the point that it no longer became a trophy and a treasure. Because I got to tell you, some of the guys that I saw carry these backpacks, I saw them fall. I saw them make some decisions. And it's like, okay. Now, it just carries my stuff. I'm not as worried about the backpack. But here's where I want us to go with trophies and treasures. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, it says what, and I put do in the brackets because you can put that, that word in the sentence either way. What we do with them or what do we do with them. You realize there's a difference in those two sentences. What we do with them or what, we, or what do we do with them. What do, they come, what do they become within our hearts? If you will, go to the book of Matthew. Go to the book of Matthew. We're going to go to chapter 6. This can be, if you've been in church for any length of time, this could be a fairly familiar passage. It's coming out of the Sermon on the Mount. I have actually had to take some notes because I've got some quotes that I want to, to work with. And I want to read to you and I want to make sure that I say them correctly. So... Um, as we get into this passage, if you will, we're going to start with verse 19. Jesus is speaking here. He says, Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Pray with me if you would. Father, Speak to us today. God, I pray that as you have done in my life and are still doing in my life, that you show me the things that I have set up as treasures and trophies. And God, with what you want to do in my life, and God, sometimes how those things get in the way. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. If you think about what is a treasure and what is a trophy, there are things from our past, right? I was amazed. We've, we have a, a, a keepsake box at our house that we've been, been, you know, they're keepsakes. When we moved from Garland to here, we started going through some of those things. We opened up this one box and I pulled out this. It was a legal size sheet of paper. And on it were taped my track ribbons from middle school. Okay, I was in middle school in the late 70s. We'll leave it there, okay? In middle school, I got to tell you, I got to brag for just a second. I was fast. I was short. I was stocky. I was strong. When they did the body measurement and, and, and uh, you know, body fat and all that, I had like 4.5% body fat. I was in shape. Man, I was it. I was the second fastest kid in Pasadena School District in the 220. Notice I did that in yards, not in meters, because we didn't know what meters were. I was the second fastest kid in the district. And we had 13 middle schools. I mean, I was, I was it. I mean, I had these, 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 these ribbons. It's like, look at that. I saw them as we were moving. I looked at them. <laughs> yeah, right. Because I looked at myself and went, yeah, yeah, right. And I went ahead and tossed those because I there's no need to keep those. It reminded me of a day when I did something that I no longer can do. And you know what? It did not give me the excitement that it once did to look back and go, when I look in there, I took first place. Now I look back and go, I wish I could run. I wish I could run. For longer than, you know, about 15 yards. No, no, no 220 anymore, okay? 
or, well, let's move it to meters. I can't do a 200 meter anymore. If I can make it five or six meters, I'm doing really good. I may have to stop and rest for a while. Because when you don't have cartilage in a knee, it doesn't work as well. You know, and you look at things and go, hmm, why am I keeping that? Part of it is reminding me of an old time, and I'm reliving my old times instead of what God has for me now. And I look back and go, ooh, yeah, there were some things in there that I'm like, mm, 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 mm. I have some things that bring back really good memories. Here's a little piece of trivia. Some of you might know this. On my 16th birthday, I got to sing with Barry Manilow. I sang backup for Barry Manilow in the summit in Houston, Texas. October the 3rd, 1980. Man, that was a big deal. Our high school choir was selected to sing backup for two songs with Barry Manilow. I still got some of this stuff. Man, that was a good time. And I look back at that and go, hmm, those were good times. And I look back at the picture with the people and go, those are good people. I'm still in touch with a lot of those folks. But you know what? I don't keep that out where I can see it. Because it's like, okay, that's a good memory. I can set that aside. I can still sing. I won't get to sing for Barry Manilow again, you know, and that's okay. But I can keep hold of those things and look and go, "Mm mm-hmm, that was a good time. But I can't live there where that was setting. What is a treasure? I'll look this up. What is a treasure? Let me read this. According to dictionary.com, it's on the internet. It's got to be true, right? Uh, Dictionary.com. I actually looked it up in a hard dictionary as well. I had to find one. But um, it says, a treasure, anything or person greatly valued or highly prized. A treasure. Anything or person. Oh, then I decided, let's look and see what a trophy is. One definition definition says this, any memento or memorial. Okay, that fits. But then I kept going down the definitions. And I like this one. I like this one that it said, a symbol of success that is used to impress others. A symbol of success that is used to impress others. We would never use anything to impress others, would we? Hey, we're in church. Come on. Do we at times use things to impress others? Yeah, we do. You know what? I use this to try to impress others. God showed me, you know what? This does not make you a successful person, does not make you a successful student minister, does not make you successful at all. All it says is you were able to track down and find the backpack and buy it. Maybe that's where you were successful. But that's about it. But you know, nowadays you can go find the backpacks pretty easy. Online. And you can figure out what store has it and you don't have, you don't have to make many trips. Actually, I think I found this in a Target. I'm not sure. We went up a step. No, I'm joking. <clears throat> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I wrote this down. And again, I wrote some stuff down, so I'm having to put it down here. So I'm having to look back at my notes. So bear with me. Trophies and treasures are meant for a season. Over time, they don't have the same impact. Let's bring this home for some of our older folks. Anybody that might be married and have kids. Okay? Or grandkids. Or thereabouts. Notice that your kids or your grandkids, things that we loved, they look at those things and kind of go, hmm, okay. True? True? Some of them, they'll, they'll, I mean... I, That you'll pull something out and go, oh, look at this. And they'll go, okay. (laughs) And? What am I supposed to do with that? I have a Victrola at my house. I have a cylinder phonograph at my house. Patent date on it is 1888. It was my grandfather's. 
And I want to look at my kids. I, I pull, you know, no, none of the family wants it. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just sell it if I can find somebody that will pay me for it. But I've got 24 of the cylinders. And I pull them out and I look at my kids and go, look at this. And they go, and? Do you not get what this is? This is a treasure. Man, look at this thing. This is how they first started listening to records. Oh, you mean the, 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 the yeah, the discs, the big discs. Yeah, yeah. I can remember one time when, when uh, I'm trying to remember where it was. I can't, I, I can't put my finger on it. But somebody saw one of my 33s, okay, my LPs, and they went, man, that's a huge CD. How many songs can you get on that? And I said, about 10, front and back. You can put them on the back. Yeah. But have you noticed, have you noticed that there are things that we treasured that we look at our kids and they go, okay, whatever. Yeah, what am I going to do with it? You know, when we started moving, we started finding stuff and going, ooh, should we give this to the girls? The girls aren't going to want it. What do they want it for? They don't even know what it is. I've got tools in my garage that, that I want to be able to pass down to my grandson. I, I'm having to show him how to use it. Guys, you know what a bracing bit is? Do you know how to use it? My grandson's learning. But I'm, I have a feeling he's going to look and go, here, why I do that? Let me grab this one. You know? But things that we treasured that now don't carry as much value to the other generations. We think about that and kind of go, oh, 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 wow, wow. Henry Blackaby, I don't know if you know who Henry Blackaby is. Henry Blackaby wrote a study several years, decades ago, called Experiencing God. It's an amazing study. Experiencing God. And Henry Blackaby said this. Have you ever, we're talking about seasons and how things change as they go. Have you ever noticed parenting a preschooler? Is different than parenting a teenager or being an empty nester because there's seasons. You realize that our treasures and our trophies aren't in themselves necessarily bad, but they have seasons. But the treasures that we need to be storing up are not things here on earth, earth. They are things in heaven. Are we doing things that are heavenly minded? They're going to have an impact for all of eternity. What God wants to do in and through our lives will not only have an impact now, but will have an impact for eternity. You realize that's who God is. God doesn't look and say, I want you to be happy. You're, I, would, I, would, I would challenge you to do this. Look through the entire copy of Scripture and tell me where God says, I want you to be happy. He wants us to be joyful. And when it talks about riches that we can't even imagine, things that he has planned for us that we can't even fathom. We've been going through Revelation with Chester, and John's writing down what he can with the language that he has, with the vocabulary that he can work with and trying to describe to us heaven. And we read that and go, wow. And it doesn't even do justice to what heaven is. What God wants for us is so much more, and sometimes we settle for less than what God has for us. We settle for a lot less and go, well, I guess this is as good as ever going to get. Really? No. Because I'm looking forward to a hope and a future in heaven. And that's where I want to store my treasures. Because guess what? Nothing can happen to them. Nothing can happen to them. Anyway, let me get back over to here. Uh, As we look back at the good old days, look now at, uh, look at now and things are not the same. I can remember somebody doing this to me one day. We were talking about church and our church in the panhandle. And we'd introduced the new music. Now, mind you, this was, this was 20 years ago. We had introduced some new, new music, you know. Um, and they said, well, why can't we go back to the old days? And I said, the old days? What do, you, what, do, what do you mean? Well, back to the old days. I said, how far back do we go? To when you're comfortable, to when your treasures and your trophies kind of this is what 
well, now, now, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, you know, and they were kind of him hauling and, you know, a little stepping and fetching in there. And I said, so you want us to go back to a different music time when you were comfortable, right? Well, yeah. And I said, so how far back do we go? Do we go back to New Testament church when they didn't have music? Well, if we're going to do that, then let's go ahead and take everything back and we'll take out the cushions on the pews and we're going to take out the central air. Oh, now, preacher, you're, get, you're, you're starting to meddle now. No, but if we go back to the old days, how far back do we go? To when you had your trophies and your treasures or to what God is doing now? And they're like, you had to bring God into it, didn't you? Yeah, because he's in charge. But you realize everything has seasons. As I look through my, our, our keepsake box and I looked at things, I hey, this was good. It was for a season. I don't need it any longer. I took it and set it aside. Yes, I'm going to tell you that my ribbons from track ended up in the trash. Because they weren't going to do anybody else any good. They served their purpose for the season and we took care of it and let it go. Some things we have to let go of. Some things we just have to let go of. It's a different time. In fact, Ecclesiastes 3.1. If you know anything about Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3.1, it says this. Get my glasses. The words of the teacher, son of David, king of Jerusalem. Actually, chapter 3. Let me move over to that one. There is an occasion for everything and a time for every activity under heaven. What Solomon is saying here is there is a season. There's a season. Just like we have seasons in Texas. Hot weather and hotter weather. And then a little bit of rain. I was in Minneapolis one day on a a, a business trip. And the guy looked at me and he says, Minneapolis has two seasons. Winter and road construction. I looked at him and said, what? He says, we use salt to melt the ice. So when you use salt to melt the ice, it tears up the road. So we have winter And road constructions, those are the two seasons we have. And I thought, that's pretty cool. You know, it's always mind-boggling to me when God uses some of the most mundane things to teach me. And I look back and go, wow. That was pretty simple for me to learn. When we lived in the Panhandle, when we lived in Sam Norwood, one of the things that my church members, most of my church members were either farmers or cattle ranchers. Okay? In fact, it was interesting. I would wake up about 5, 5.30 every morning. Walk two houses down to the coffee shop. And I would sit and drink coffee with the cowboys. Until about 8.30, 9 o'clock. And when I say cowboys, I mean cowboys. Guys that would pull up in their pickups. Not their trucks. Their pickups. With the trailer on the back with their horses in them. Because they'd be going around and up herd. These were cowboys. They wore spurs on their shoe, on their boots, because they rode a horse, not because it was a fashion statement. So these are cowboys, okay? Cowboy cowboys. But I started looking at farming. When I moved there, I know about farming. How many of you know about farming? Raise your hands, you know about farming, okay? Here was my thought of farming when I got there. When you get ready to put a crop in, you plow, you plant, you water, you grow, you harvest, you repeat. Sound about right? Let me tell you what I learned when I got to the panhandle. Living with farmers, I learned this. You've got to prep the soil. You don't go out and just plow it. You've got to prep the soil. There is a season for prepping the soil. Then you plow. Then you water. Then you plant. Then you water. Then you weed. Then you fix the equipment because there's continued maintenance on your equipment. Okay? Then you fertilize. Then you weed again. Then you let it grow. Then you weed again. Then you prepare for the harvest. You got to get the equipment. You got to get the barns. You got to figure out where your grain's going to go. You got to figure out where your cotton's going to go, where your soybeans are going to go, where your peanuts are going to go. Where's it going? Because you don't just go out and harvest it, you got to have a place for it to go. Then you harvest it. But you've got to plan for the harvest. Do I need to bring in other people to help me harvest? Do I harvest it myself? Do I rent equipment to do it? What do I do to get this harvest in? 
In which fields do I do first? Then you sell or deliver or do something with the harvest. Then you start planning for the next crop. And I'm sitting here going, goodness. There is more to farming than I realized. We're not going to get into raising cattle. <laughs> Trust me. There's, uh-uh. We don't have time for that one. But if you want to hear some interesting stories, I can tell you some interesting stories about raising cattle. That I, when I raised cattle in Arkansas was completely different from the way they raised cattle in the panhandle. It's different locations, different seasons. But we have seasons. You realize that there are seasons that go on. There are some things that are in our life that God put in our life for a specific purpose, for a specific reason, for a specific season. How many of us do the exact same thing we did 20 years ago? No change. How many of you cook? How many? I'm, I'm going I'm to guess that a lot of you cook. If you cook, do you cook the exact same way that you did back then? Or have you made some adjustments? Have you made some modifications? Have you changed? Why? There's new ways. There's new things. Sometimes it drives Trish crazy. I do, I do things that will drive her crazy. You could not imagine that I would ever do that. But there are some things that I do that drive her quite crazy. One of my favorite channels to watch on TV, Food Network. I love watching Food Network because I get ideas. I love to cook. You give me some good sharp knives. In fact, our, our knives, we have to be careful and not sharpen them real sharp because somebody in our house ends up cutting themselves and going, huh! and then I stop. I should have told you I sharpened that knife really, really well. Um, but we're not going to mention names. But uh, I love to cook. I, I mean, get me, get me the pans, you know. I like to season as I go, and I'm like, ooh, I hadn't thought about using that seasoning. And what? Ooh, well, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. And I'll try it. I've made my own marinade for chicken. It's pretty good. It's a cilantro lime marinade. We won't go too far down. But I've learned that because I used to make a brown sugar chicken. Now I'm doing this, and it's like, ooh, that's cool. Ooh, that's cool. As I'm learning new things, I'm adding that in, and it's making a change. But you realize with God, God never stays the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But what he's wanting to do in our lives is a constant change. Because he wants to grow us up into who he wants us to be. And not just to say, okay, there you go, happy little... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, if you're a parent, think about this with your kids. It would have been great had they stayed one age. Right? But which age? Do you want them to stay as a toddler? You got diapers. Do you want them to stay as a preschooler? Elementary? You see where I'm going with this? You want them to be a teenager? Wow, that was quick. But do you look and notice that as they are growing, they are changing and that we are part of that change and we help to shape them. As the parent, we help shape them with who they are, with how they are growing, with who they are becoming. You realize that's the same thing with God. And we go through those seasons. Have you ever had those seasons in your life? And if you look back now, you can say, yeah, it was a season. When you were miserable. You're just like, oh, you're just kind of grumpy. Or you've ever had those seasons to where, man, nothing can go wrong. And you're like, I wish I could live there. Have you ever noticed the seasons? They change? Have you ever noticed that sometimes the seasons, not that it would do it here in Texas, that suddenly it's going along and it's, it's 70, 80, 90 degrees and it becomes 40, 50, 60, and then it's 90 and then it's like, you know, up and down. And the seasons can, can kind of vacillate a little bit. Seasons in our life can do the same thing. That we can be going along and God has us in a certain season and it's like, okay. And here's the thing that you've got to realize. The season that I'm in may not be the season you're in. Even though we're quasi in summer, 
We're all in the same season, but in life, we're not all in the same season. There are certain things that God will have take place in our life to teach us things, just like we had our kids. There are certain things that we kind of like going, do I say this anything? Do I say this? You know, they're doing such and such. Do I say that? Do I say that? No, they're not ready. And, and I know in my girls' lives, there were certain things that I could not address with them until they were at a certain age and had grown up enough to understand what it was I was saying. That it's like, okay, now I can say it. Boom. And it made sense to them. And I've tried it before. And they're kind of like going, deer in the headlights. Huh? I don't get it. And God does the same thing with us. That God wants to grow us up to a certain point and then look at us and say, okay, now you get it. It's just like this. How many times have you read scripture and you've read the same passage over and over and all of a sudden you look at something and go, oh, I never saw that before. How cool is that? Because you weren't ready to accept it. You weren't in the season to be able to understand what God was trying to show you. But now you are and it's like, okay, there it is. And so we have to look at some of the things that God has done in our lives and look at some of the things that have happened and we look at the treasures and the trophies. And do we have a trophy room set up? Do we have in our own lives, do we have a trophy room set up to where we walk into that room and look around and go, I feel so good about me because look at what I have done. Look at my trophies. Y'all ever watch the show The Voice? The Voice is an interesting show. I thought it was very interesting towards the end when they were doing everything from home. And I noticed something, and I'm not going to call the guy out on it, but there was a certain judge on there that when he was sitting at his piano, what was behind his piano in, shot of, in clear view of the camera shot? His awards. Where everybody could see him. He's proud of those. He should be. He's accomplished a lot. But does he have them where he pulls them off the shelf and says, look at this one. Look at this one. They were back there. If you want to look at him, you can look at him. If you want to look at him at the piano, look at him at the piano. But how many of us in our lives are doing the thing with our trophies and our treasures to where it's like, yep, look at me. Here I am. I've got a treasure. I've got a trophy. And I'm going to live in that day and that time. How many folks would like to go back and live in last season, in winter, this last winter? How many of you would like to go back and live in that season? No, we're not talking without masks. You know, now, but let me ask you this. Can we go back and live in that season? Can I go back? Well, I would stop and say, can I go back to the first of March? I'd love to go back to the first of March. You know why? I don't have this thing around my neck. I can't live in that season. But guess what? We're in this season right now where we're having to wear these things. So what do we do? We make it through this season. And then we pray we don't have to go back through that season. But you know what? If God chooses to do something and we go back through it, guess who's in control of it? He is. I am not going to count this as a treasure or a trophy. Has it kept me safe? Maybe. Probably. I don't know. But I've got recommendations to do it. So, okay. But then I look at my life and I say, what is my treasure? What is my trophy? And is it something that I'm storing in heaven? Or is it something I have here on earth? What is my trophy? What am I walking around and holding up? And saying, I ain't letting go of this. This is mine. You ain't taking it. Even if God looks and says, you know what? That season is up. We're moving to a new season. It's not like TV shows to where you can go back and do a rerun. We're going to go back to season five. I don't have that option. I need to look and say, where does God have me now with what God is wanting to do in my life right now with where he wants me to be? That needs to be my trophy. 
That needs to be my treasure that I can look and say, God, I want to take what you have for me and I want that to be my treasure. I want that to be my trophy. And I want you to have it because you gave it to me. And you're the one that's causing it to happen. And I want to store my treasures in heaven. And I want to look and say, God, can you, can you use me? Uh, no, not God, can you use me? It's God, will you use me? Uh, no, no, hang on. God, I want you to use me. I want to be available. Do you realize that the first two statements were based on me? And the last one is, God, you want to work in my life. Help me to allow that to happen. In whatever means that is. Sometimes changing seasons is not easy. When we lived in Arkansas, we lived in a little bitty house across the parking lot, across the church parking lot. Now this house was 24 by 24 before you took off the 12 by 4 front porch. We had one closet, two bedrooms, a bathroom, a kitchen, sort of a living room, and a hallway. One closet. We lived there for a year. Do you realize you can't put much in a closet with one closet and there's four of us in the house? We had a room across the parking lot at the church that we kept our clothes in. We kept the wardrobe boxes, okay? Winter, spring, summer, fall. We had to change our clothes out depending on the season. And if you got one of those cold snaps and you already had your, your, your spring stuff out and you got a cold snap, it was not uncommon to see either Trish or I beelining it across that parking lot and go over to the other building to get some warmer clothes because we'd already moved them out. The seasons had changed and we weren't prepared for the season change. We were praying for the season change. But you realize with God as the seasons come up, He's going to prepare us, give us what we need when we need it. And so something that we may have, he may have given us that we're hanging on to and going, oh, no, but God, you gave this to me. He's going, yeah, and we're done with that. Let's move on. Because what you're hanging on to, because I'm hanging on to a trophy or a treasure so tightly, I can't grab hold of what he has for me now. And I look at my life and think, I held on to that stupid backpack for a couple of years, so tightly, both physically and emotionally, that I held on to that backpack so tightly that I couldn't grab hold of what God had for me. It's like, but I have this for you. You've got to let go of this to take this. And for me, I had to get to the point that I had to do some, I had to sacrifice some sacred cows in my life. And get rid of them and say, you know what? Strange thing is, God let me keep this. You know why? This is now a reminder to me of the only thing that needs to set my value and my worth and who I am is Jesus Christ. Nothing that I have hold of. That doesn't say anything about me other than sometimes I'm a pack rat. And I put too much stuff in there that I don't need. And so I'm cleaning it out and saying, okay. But now, I use that as a thing to say, mm-hmm, God's bigger, God's stronger, and God has so much better plans. There's a season for everything. So my question is this, is, are we in the season to where God is saying, you've got some trophies and some treasures that you're hanging on to that I want you to set down so that you can grasp what I've got for you. I want you to let go of this. You've heard the story about the squirrel. There was a jar, small neck jar, with a nut in the bottom of it. And he takes his hand and shoves it in and grabs the nut, and he can't get his hand out. There's a whole pile of nuts over there that he can get hold of, but now he's hanging on to this one, and it's stuck in a jar, and he can't do anything. In fact, the jar is attached, and he can't get his, his hand out because he's not going to let go of that nut. He's got access to many, many more of them over there. But he's got this one right here he's holding on to and going, mm, I ain't going to let go of it. I like that. That looks pretty good. But you know what? I got this one. And I think we're a lot, of, a lot of times like that that we're going, you know what? God has given me this. 
and I'm hanging on to this. I can't get my hand out of the jar. There's so much more he has for me over there. And sometimes I have to stop and go, well, let me let go of this. Take my hand out. Oh, look at what God has for me now. And I think that happens to us. I know it's happened to me. That's happened to me. So where are you at? In your own life, do you have a trophy or a treasure that hanging on to? It might be this right here. You might be at a point of saying, this all sounds really cool. I don't get this whole God thing. But you might be at a point of going, I don't even know who God is. I'd like to know who God is. Great. Find me after service. I'll talk to you. We'll talk about who God is. We'll talk about who Jesus is. God may be moving in your life to where you want to stop and say, you know what? I like what you're saying and I need to make Jesus part of my life. Here in a minute when we have an invitation, if you want to come down and talk to me, great. If you want to talk to me afterwards, great. I'll talk to you whenever. You want to call me later in the week? Hey, can we talk about this? Sure, I'll talk to you about it. I can tell you about Jesus. I would love to do that. Of how the things that are hanging on in our lives we can let go of and then we can get hold of Jesus. And the difference that Jesus can make in your life. I would love to have that opportunity. But what is it that God's doing business with you? God's done business with me prepping this message. God's done business with me this morning during this message that I stop and go, Oh God, there's some other things I need to let go of. You want to talk about an interesting discussion in my head while I'm trying to preach this sermon and God's doing work on me and I'm like... Mm-hmm. And sometimes I've had to just let go of the message and let God preach it while he and I are doing this over here. What business do you need to do with God? I don't want us to ever come to this building and leave the same as we showed up. I want God to be able to do work in our lives that we can let go of some things because as he wants to change the season in our lives, that's his choice. As a child of God, we give him that choice to change the season in our lives. What does he want to do in your life? How does he want to transform it? How does he want to change it? What does he want to get rid of so that you can continue to grow and mature in your walk with him. What is it that he's wanting to do this morning? Pray with me if you would. Father, as we come to this time, I pray that you would just, God, even as you've done it in my life this morning, that you have, you've made an impact. God, you've, you've shown me things that I need to let go of. You've shown me things that I need to just kind of take my hands off of and say, God, it's yours. You may be changing the season or you may just be refining some things. But Father, I pray that you would help me to to, to look in my own life with treasures and trophies and what I need to do to get rid of those. And Father, to prioritize some things. God, I pray that you would do that with all of us this morning. And Father, I pray that if somebody needs to come and get right with you, that they would do that. And Father, if somebody needs to come and place their life in your hands, that they would do that. Lord, we just give you this time. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand? Let's worship together.
life is born, Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious If you'll go ahead and be seated real quick, I got a couple of things for you real fast. Um, Friday, we were blessed by Cornerstone Assistance Network. We were able to pick up 100 gallons of milk, 100 pints of whipping cream, and 100 pints of half and half. We have all of it about 25 gallons of I'm going to say, distributed. So, before you leave today, if you would like to get a gallon of milk, or two gallons of milk, uh, some whipping cream, or some half and half, we've got it over in the gym. We'll get somebody over there to open up. Uh, we've got the boxes over there. So, if you know somebody that needs some milk, we've started passing it out to folks. We made uh, Chester and Charlie took a load. Um, Anna Luisa took a load. Rhonda took a load. We've been passing it out to different folks. So, if you need milk, Half and half or whipping cream. Looks like we may be making some ice cream this week. Um, come grab us and we'll, we'll get, we'll, it's going to be over in the gym in the kitchen over there that we'll open that up and we'll get that out. Uh, so if you need some, please. If you know of somebody you think might need some, please come get it. You can, you can actually freeze whipping cream and use it. So come grab some, please. I don't want to have to dump it and pour it out. Uh, but Cornerstone Assistance Network got us that, so if you're needing some of it, come come get that. I have got some great, great news. We have got two folks that are joining Victory Baptist Church. One of them is my mother-in-law. She's still at home. She's not as comfortable yet getting out and about, so we're slowly getting her out. But she wants to move her membership from Murphy Road Baptist Church. And so she, she knows Jesus as Lord and Savior, and so I'm excited about that one. But the other one that I want to talk about is Rebecca Blanchard. Rebecca has come and said that she wants to be a part of Victory Baptist Church. She's coming on statement of her faith that she knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and that she has been baptized. And so I just want us to welcome them. I think my mother-in-law is watching on Facebook. So if you would, let's just, uh, I would love to do it. Let's just do a round of applause to welcome them. Uh, to the membership here. I know normally we would have folks come down here and stand and come by and shake hands, but you know, we're kind of in that social distancing thing. So we'll have an opportunity to do that, but um, I want to say welcome to the family. We love having you here, and welcome, Mom. 
if mom's watching. So, um, but anyway, guys, we have had, we've had a great day. We've had a great week. Yesterday was amazing. We're going to have some more work days. Uh, if you have some spare time and you say, hey, is there something you, I can do? Holler at me. I bet you we can find something. We're starting to clean some rooms and, and air it out because the building's been shut up for a while. Charlie. That was, that was going to be next. I was going to look and say, Chester, thank you for cooking yesterday. That was wonderful. So uh, we did let the ladies have some bacon when they showed up. So that was a good thing. So anyway, um, we will be doing that again. And I am looking forward to the time when we can lose the mask and we can sit closer and we can hug and shake hands or we can shake hand, you know, shake hugs and hand, you know, something like that. So anyway, if you would stand with me, let's pray together. Uh, our graduates again, we love you. Amen. We are proud of you. And we pray for you for a wonderful future with what God has for you. So let's pray as we close out. Father, we love you. We praise you for who you are. And we just give you today. Thank you for the time we've had together to worship. Thank you for the way that you show us that you love us. And God, I thank you that you're not done with us. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you guys Wednesday. We'll be back again in the chapel, 7 o'clock, for the Revelation study with Chester.